Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Karen's Kitchen. I am making a jam today and I've never made jam before but when I found I could do something in the quick cooker to make a, a fruit jam I decided to do it because peach jam is awesome. This time of year is good any time of year. Hi sis. Good, you're his Rose. Good to see you. Peach, peaches are good and I got some fresh peaches. I had bought a bunch of peaches today and it called for a, a pound and a half. So when I was measuring them out Hi, Lisa. So when I was measuring them out at Walmart, I took about four peaches, and I thought, well, I'll put, a, I'll put an extra one in there for measure, extra measure. So I put an extra, and there's Rick's. Good to see you, sis. So I put it, I, so I've got, so I've got um, a pound, and actually I've got a little more than a pound and a half of peaches that I've, I've actually peeled. I don't know if you had to peel them, but I peeled them and, and uh, cut them up, chopped them up real small. Hi, Tammy. Good to see you. <laughs> Well, I am a grandmother, but you shouldn't come in and say that. You know, that's disrespectful in a way. You know, you should not be doing that. I am a grandmother, but you don't dis you don't disrespect me that way. That's not very nice, because you could come into somebody's periscope and they may not be a grandmother and they'll take offense to it. So you don't do that. Oh, good evening. Good to see you. Um, wow, thank you for the super hearts already. Thank you. Let me go ahead and ask for a share. And now I shared it out. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to put... Oh, and it calls for a... Honey. It calls, I think, for... Let's see. Uh, a quarter cup of honey. Well, in lieu of honey, I'm going to use agave. Because I like agave. Although I do use honey, but I think agave would be a little bit better. So I'm going to use agave. So I'm going to put the peaches in here. Oh, jeez, my, my lemon juice spilled. Let me go get some more. Shouldn't have measured it out so quick. Some of it spilled all over my cupboard. I'll just remeasure it. Gotta have two tablespoons. I should have known I'd probably knock it off. Okay, there we go. And I'll just wipe that up. And then I'm putting a, a quarter cup of agave. I like agave better than I do honey anyway. But feel free if you make this recipe to use honey if you choose to. They say you're not vegan if you use honey. Well, <laughs> I disagree with them, but that neither here nor there. All right. Now, I'm going to put this lid on, and believe it or not, this only has to cook for one minute. However, i got to let it come down pressure naturally, and then i gotta, then I got to put it on sear for 15 minutes after that. Hi, Arlene. Good to see you. I just got my peaches in there. Okay, I'm going to put this down. Time. And down to one minute. That's all it's going to take is one minute. It's going to take a little time to come to pressure, and then I got to release it naturally. So this don't take long to cook them because they're only just. Can you imagine that? Just one minute. So it's only going to take one minute to cook them, and then I, I release it naturally, and then I turn around and so put it on sear. Ah, oh, you're bringing President Trump. No, thank you. No, thank you. Don't bring President Trump in my Periscope, please, because that's too much drama. I don't, I don't care to talk about Trump in my Periscope. Thank you. This is a drama-free scope, and I don't want anything brought up about that's not food. I don't want you bringing him up in here. Um, so, how's everybody's weather doing? Um, we're on the, we're on the for, uh, cloudy side right now. A little forecast. We're not going to get as hot as we have been, but... We're going to warm up quite a bit, you know, next week we're going to get in the high 80s again. So, and I know my daughter's not here. She's got to go pick my son-in-law from work because he got off early again today because of orientation. So, she won't be here, but she'll probably watch the replay. And thank you for those that, oh, 91, oh my goodness. So, so that's really hot, Lisa. That, hi, Nikki, good to see you. And thank you to those that come in to watch my replays each and every day. I appreciate that very much and giving me hearts. You can tap in. You can also tap hearts during the replay. Um, I appreciate everything that you do uh, because I'm a vegan. That's why. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna be a drama, if you're gonna cause drama, then you're gonna have to leave because I'm a vegan and I do not fix chicken noodle soup. I I want to make a peach jam in here. If you don't like the fact that I make peach jam, then you can leave because I I make what I want to make. This is my scope. It's not yours. So I will not make chicken noodle soup. Never. It'll be vegan. It will not be. It will not be animal. So, 
Um, just let, letting you know right that I'm a vegan. So, and you can see that in my title. I put this down vegan. But you got somebody always trying to, gotta, try to start trouble. That's the way it goes, you know. <laughs> okay, that guy's been muted. He's gone. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. Sorry about that guy. I had, I, I'm muting for now, but I'll block him later. Uh, you know, that's terrible. Spat at your cooking pot. Wow. <laughs> drama. I don't need drama in here. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was rude. It was very rude. He's been, he's been muted, so he can't say anything. I muted him. You know, and I'll block him later because I, I don't tolerate that kind of stuff in here. Hi, Natasha. Good to see you. People can be so rude sometimes and nasty just because I don't want to fix what he wants. This is my periscope. I have a right to fix what I want. And if he doesn't want to see it, he doesn't have to come in here. Some people can be so cold and cruel sometimes, you know. But you know, it is what it is. Anyway, hi, good to see you. Welcome. I know Lisa said it was 91 where she's at. That's getting up there a little too high. Good to see you. Welcome to everybody coming in. Thank you for inviting your followers. Thank you for sharing this out. And thank you for being here. Just being here because without you being here, I would be doing this uh, talking to myself, and I don't want to hear myself talk. Uh, oh, somebody is, somebody said, why don't I fix chicken noodle soup? And then I told him, I says, I'm vegan, and I don't fix chicken noodle soup. And he comes back, and he says, well, I spat on your cooking uh, thing. Oh, thank you. He says he spat on my cooking pot, so I just muted him. I mean, that's very, very rude. Very, very rude, you know, just because he didn't, he didn't get in his chicken noodle soup. Well, I don't fix chicken noodle soup. I'm a vegan. So, you know, some people don't understand. It's probably a new person. That's a, probably some young kid. I don't know. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. And I just go on. I just move on. And, and um, is, everybody have, is everybody having a good day? And what are you planning on having for supper? Have you got your supper all planned out? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. A little immature. You're right. Exactly. Thank you all for coming in. Um, I, hi, Crystal. And I know John was in here. There's Gary. Um, I saw John come in earlier. I'm not cool as John, ho hopefully, because he changed his uh, he changed his account. So um, I'm glad to see him in here. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, good to see good to see Gary in here. Good to see John. Good to see Lisa in here and Erlene. Some of my old followers that you follow me all the time. Good to see you guys in here. Uh, Mall of America. Oh, boy. That's different, isn't it? <laughs> wow. <coughs> That's kind of awesome. I've never been there, to tell you the truth. Um, where is that? Is that the one in Minnesota? Because I thought there's one in Minnesota. Um, oh, it, uh, your old account got... Oh, you, you, your old account got disabled, John? Okay. Well, well, it's good to see you anyway, John. I didn't know that was you until... Um, I was talking to Linda the other day, and she says, yes, that's you. So I didn't know that your, that your username got changed in here. But it's good to see you, John. Um, let's keep this drama free, so I'll just talk about what I've got in here. Um, there's Alexis. I don't know if you'd be in here, Alexis. I've already got this in the pot. And it's only going to take a minute to cook. And then i got to not naturally release it, and then i got to put it on sear for about 15 minutes to, to thicken it up. Good to see you, Alexis. This is a peach jam, and I bought the peaches today, and I washed them real good, and I peeled them all, and I chopped them up the best I could. Um, oh, you well, good luck to you, Alexis, and I hope that you lost some more weight, but I'm sure you'll tell everybody tomorrow what you've lost. You're doing so good. Keep it up. Thank you to all coming in, um, and thank you for being here, because it's like Alexis said. Without you guys being here, we would be talking to ourselves. And we don't really want to talk to ourselves. I talk to myself as it is during the day, you know. And when you start, ask, uh, start asking yourself questions and start answering, that's when you got a big problem. So you got to be careful of that. But I have a tendency to sometimes do that too. Hi, Harry Winston. Good to see you. Um, good to see you. This is going to take a short time to cook. But then I have to, I have to uh, release the pressure naturally after that. So it will take, take a little time to come to pressure. Um, not much in here. Oh, yes, it is good to see you. It's good to see everybody. I'm not talking to myself that way. And um, I was totally surprised that my Periscope yesterday, I had 800 viewers. 800. I didn't expect that. 800. So I've got almost 900 right now um, from yesterday. 
Oh, thank you so much. Well, I love Alexi's cooking scopes too, although I'm never in there in the morning, but I do watch the replays, which I did watch it this morning. And that cake was awesome. I love the way she did that cake. It's, it, you know, don't, uh, believe me, Alexis, I can't get it straight up and down either because it would be lopsided for me too, but I think you did a better job of stacking them on top of each other than I would have because that cake was awesome. And I like the way that she cut the, cut the two out so she could put the surprise in the middle. And that was awesome the way she did that. Put the surprise in there, the, the M&Ms and the, I just hope that Bryce isn't listening, the M&Ms and the uh, sprinkles. That was awesome. And it just came to pressure. Um, so it was awesome. Hi, Stella. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for sharing out. Thank you for the hearts and thank you for the super hearts. Thank you for everything that you guys give me in here. Because the super hearts help me with my ministry, help me buy more food for, to, to show you how to cook vegan, how to eat properly. Um, <coughs> oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, a, a party for 15 at 830? Wow, is he going to some kind of restaurant, Alexis? Because I know you probably wouldn't have it in your house. Your house would be so loaded. Oh, wow, that's awesome. He's going to get a lot of good, nice things in. I hope that they all got him stuff for college, too. <coughs> I heard what you said this morning, what you got him as gifts. I hope he doesn't take offense to it, you know. Oh, at the pizza place. Oh, awesome. I just hope he doesn't take offense to you getting, getting him underwear, Alexis. But you know something? If you didn't buy it for him, he probably would never think to buy it for himself. And it's something he can always use anyway. <coughs> so that's awesome that you thought that much of him to get him a lot of nice gifts today. Hard to believe he's 18 already. Where'd the time go, huh? <laughs> I hope he has a great birthday. And I'm sure he will. 15 people sharing it with him. That's a special birthday. I mean, he only turned 18 once. And then he's going off to college in a few weeks. I know it's going to be hard on you, Alexis. You're going to miss him. I know. I have um, got an empty nest syndrome. Not anymore because it's been a long time now. But when my kids first left home, I got empty nest syndrome. I got it real bad because my son left first because he's the oldest. When he left, I still had my daughter there. But then when she went out on her own, then I really had the empty nest syndrome. Because you're so used to having them them there and then all of a sudden poof they're gone you know <laughs> so you know we could but we have to let them branch out on their own we have to <coughs> we have to let them go and sow their wild oats so to speak you know and learn to be do things on their own because if we don't they're never going to learn on th themselves you know but i i know you're going to have an F emptiness syndrome but you still want to have your mom there and that alexa so it won't be like you're completely alone but still you won't have him to talk to you know, and I know what that's like. If I don't talk to my daughter, I kind of go crazy. I have withdrawal. I don't know. I can't talk to her every day because sometimes she's doing something or I'm doing something. See, now it's cooked already. And I'm going to set my my uh, thing for 15 minutes. Or uh, No, I'm not going to set because I have to let this uh, come down naturally. I'm not until I see her. But I know how it is to have empty nest syndrome. My daughter, she's got two boys at home. When they grow, when they grow up and they get out, She's going to be an empty nest, have an empty nest syndrome too. It's real easy. You know, you're so used to having your kids at home and all of a sudden, poof, they're gone. You know, uh, they grow up so fast. I mean, one minute they're there, the next minute they're not. I know how it was with my son. I mean, he left, he went out on his own. He got his own apartment at the age of 18. Uh, so, <laughs> he, of course, since the Bryce, Bryce is going off to college, I doubt he's going to do that, Alexis, because he'll be probably staying at the dorm. So that'll be his apartment there. But my son went out on his own, got his own apartment. So I visited visit, visit him at his apartment, you know, because he got, he missed his mom. He got, he got alone. He says, Mom, can you come and visit me? So I know that him, him moving out like that, he really missed me. So I go see him sometimes. And I tell you, it's a good thing he's married. Because, man, I'll tell you, that kid, when he was 18 years old, he had his own apartment. I'd walk in his apartment. He'd have stop signs sitting on the floor. He'd have railroad signs. He'd collect those signs on the roads. I don't know if he took them out of the ground or he's on laying there. He collected them. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this is hilarious to see all these signs and stop signs and railroad signs and, and curves and all that. He, those signs he was collecting. And I think he finally got rid of them. And, you know, my, my daughter-in-law won't let him have them. But... Once he got married, that, that changed. But until he got married, he was collecting all kinds of stuff. And it was funny. I just, <laughs> I had to laugh at him. 
I don't know if Bryce has ever done that, Alexis, or, or if uh, Landon has ever done that for Erlene, but kids will start collecting things and you wonder, what the world are you collecting this for? You know, well, when I was young, and I still do sometimes, but not much, I would collect Barbie dolls. I had a bunch of them that I collected. There's one that I'm, I'm not getting rid of, and that's a one, I think it's a, I got it at Toys R Us, and this was a long time ago. Of course, they no, no longer exist in soccer. They close up. But it was one of those, they had the dolls that were foreign countries, you know, different, I think it's Germany, I believe is what it is. And I wanted one so bad, so I bought one. And it's very pretty. And I keep them in their boxes. I got the Barbie dolls in their boxes. I got some um, ceramic dolls that were also uh, given to me as gifts at Christmas time. They're still in their boxes. I never took them out, so they're still brand new. You know something? They might be worth a lot of money someday. Uh, oh, you, you know, I've never had that one. I've never, I've never had that one, um, Alexis. I've had the different colors of Barbies, you know. I've had the blondes, and most of them have been the blondes, but they got brunettes too, which to me weren't the real true Barbies. But anyway, you know, uh, I try to collect as many as I can. I have a, I've had one Ken doll. But other than that, I've got a few Barbie dolls and a few, um, like I said, ceramic dolls still in the boxes. You know, they say if you're going to collect something like that, keep them in their boxes because they're going to be worth a lot more later on. Um, I think my, da my uh, daughter's uh, 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 father of the, of the old two oldest boys, his Beanie Babies, I believe he had them all in boxes. They're going to be worth something because I know he had so many Beanie Babies. They, they, now that's what they say, keep them in their boxes and, and they look like brand new. I never took them out, I keep them there. And I've got them sitting on my fireplace. And uh, of course I have to dust the boxes off and everything, but the dolls are as good as new. And I've had them, oh my goodness, maybe somebody 25, 30 years. And they, they look brand new, you know. But I, I never I never heard that until I started uh, looking it up one day. Um, oh, just a Bob Mackie outfit. I wondered about that, Alexis, because I thought, hmm, Bob Mackie Barbie. <laughs> I didn't know. I've got, I've got Barbies with different kinds of outfits on. And I, when I was a little girl, I used to play with Barbies all the time, and I'd have a lot of clothes. And I'd, I'd have the clothes on for a few minutes, then I'd change your clothes and go to something else. But I was into Barbies when I was a little girl. I was also into what I was, and I don't have it. Um, as I got older, I didn't, don't have it anymore, but my... Uh, Mother and fa or my father, not my mother because she passed away when I was three, but my father had bought me a doll. Uh, I, 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 if you remember the dolls that walked, you know, you get put on or the cried mama. Mine cried mama and she walked. So it was a very ex uh, expensive doll at one time, I think, and I don't even know what happened to it. I don't have it now. I wish I did because that would be a, uh, probably worth a lot of money now. But it did. It cried mama. And I, I do remember that, you know. Um, and, and I could hold it in his hand and, and it could walk. I mean, that was so precious to me. But you know, those were the days. You know, I look back on it now and I, I, I wonder why I, I, I was that way, that, why I like those kinds of things. But you know, as you get a little older, my daughter was collecting cabbage. Oh, I've got a Cabbage Patch doll. Do you know those are all the rage too? When they first came out, let me tell you, I couldn't beg, borrow, steal one of those for my daughter. I tried to get her one one year for Christmas. You couldn't find them anywhere they were all sold out so you kind of had to wait a few months to let it kind of die down a little bit and then you were able to go out and get a cabbage patch so she got a cabbage and the Care Bears the same thing she had the rainbow bright she had the strawberry shortcake she had all those dolls that that uh, little girls would have you know raggedy I don't think she ever had a raggedy Ann and Andy but she had she had the others you know um I love those dolls you know I wanted those for myself so <laughs> but I've got a a stuffed dog. I've got a cabbage patch doll. My stuffed dog, now I have to keep Chewy away from that because he wants to pick it up and take it outside and use it as his chew toy. But it's, a, it's this big. It's a lot bigger than he is. So he can't can't manage it very well. He can't get very far with it. So, but anyway, those were the good old days. But what's your temperature there, Alexis? I bet you're roasting right now. I imagine it's hotter than the, than the blitz in there. Are you in the 90s? Because I know you're, you're always pretty hot. We're going to get we're going to be in the 80s today, and in the next several days, we're going to be, I think, 75, 76, which isn't too bad. My daughter's having rain like crazy again. Um, she's picking up she's picking up my son-in-law, so that's why she's not in here. But uh, 97. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. That's just a little hot, Alexis. 
<laughs> a little hot. I can't, I don't do well in 97 degrees. But I think if this starts getting any hotter than that, gets any hotter than we're supposed to get, I'm definitely going to get this, get, have this, um, call somebody about the air conditioner and have them look at it and see if it's going to, how much it's going to cost. Um, oh, cooler, good, good for you, early. I'm glad it's cooler for you. Um, I bet it is. It would be too hot for me, too. I know a few years ago when my heat pump went out, the reason it went out is because the compressor went bad. And at that time, they said it was two thousand dollars to, to uh, change it and put in a new compressor. At that time, I didn't have the money, and I says, "Well, I'm going to hold off." So I never got it fixed. So I can just imagine what it's going to cost now. If it's going to cost a lot more, then they might as well put a whole new system in because I think I pay, only paid about forty-five, forty-six hundred dollars for the whole entire system for a new furnace, new heat pump, and all the ductwork. So if it's going to get real expensive, I'm just going to tell them just to take everything out and put a whole new system in. You know. Oh, your humidity is low. Well, that's great, Alexis. I know coming from Indiana, I lived in Indiana for many, many years. Our humidity would be awful high there. Very, very high. And I don't know how it is for you, Alexis, but we could not sit out at night. When it started cooling down and started getting dark, we wanted to sit outside because it was a lot cooler. But you couldn't sit out there unless you put some bug spray on, like off or whatever, because the, the mosquitoes were terrific. They would just buzz around you, and you'd get all bit up, and you'd just be scratching, and you and you looked like you had welts all over you. I don't know how, how it is for you there, but we don't have the mosquitoes here, thank goodness. I mean, we have all the other bugs, but we don't have the mosquitoes here. I guess I'm lucky on that, because I can't stand mosquitoes. I don't like them, you know. Um, but I think it's probably... The reason we don't is because we get dry in the summer. We don't have the rains that a lot of places do. That get them all summer long. You know, if you leave water st sitting in a bucket, it'll it'll draw the mosquitoes. You know, and they'll lay their eggs there in a the, in the bucket of water. I think that's probably one reason why we don't have it here, because we have them here because it's just not it's it's hot. It can get hot, and we don't have the humidity though, and we don't have and and we don't get the rain. We're dry. We're on the dry side right now. When we get rain, it might be a quarter of an inch at a time, but then it waits a while and it rains again. Well, shoot, by the time that the other next rain comes along, you need a lot more than a quarter of an inch. So here I am watering my grass every few days, water for about four hours and putting enough moisture into it. Oh, now it just went down. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, that went down fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this, and to, to cancel this and I'm gonna put, put it on sear. This has to be for 15 minutes, and I'm going to have to, uh, I'll have to set this for 15 minutes. Set my, uh, oh, the timer. Ah, whoops, I got I to do that. I forgot to set the time. I forgot to press the timer first. Okay. Oh, I can smell it. Okay, now i got to see what I have to do. Okay. Add, okay, and add in the vanilla extract and stir. Okay, I'm going to turn this off completely. Or put it on sear for, uh, and after the 15 minutes, then I have to uh, set the uh, saute for 15 minutes. Stir it occasionally until the jam is thickened. Okay, let me get a spoon. And I'll just stir. Um, I can show you right now what it looks like before I get too far. This is going to thicken up. But that's what it looks like right now. And as it thickens, then it'll be a nice jam. This is going to be awesome. I eat a lot of toast. I eat toast every morning. So I'm going to stir this occasionally. And I've set it for 15. The reason I did is because I don't pay attention to this on here so much. When I set that for 15, then I can I can um, go ahead and, and uh, wait for that to go off. And I'll just keep stirring this a little bit at a time. But anyway, you know it's nice to reminisce. When I go to my son's... At <coughs> No, it sure isn't. I wish we got more rain than we do. However, that being said, we do get constant rain in the fall. From the time, I think about sometimes late September, early October, even on Halloween, the trick-or-treaters will go, go, go from door to door, and it's just pouring down rain. From then on, it seems like it rains every day, and it just pours. Yes, it's, and the thing of it is, it's backwards. We need the rain now, and we need to be dry then. So, all these other years, I never watered my grass. Well, see, I reseeded it this year, and I wanted to keep it green since I reseeded it. And 
I'm probably going to reseed it again come fall. And I'll tell you what, there still looks like there's some empty spots. And I thought, well, if I wait till fall when it comes during the rainy season and reseed it, then it should come up real nice. Usually my, in the summertime, my grass will turn brown. You know how grass does, it dies back. Well, by the time the fall comes and it starts raining, it brightens right up to a very pretty green and it's beautiful. I just don't mind the rain, but I don't like that much of it. It's just way too much. It's, it's what I call, we need a happy medium. We either don't get any or we get too much. We need it now, not in the winter time, not in the fall, because, you know, planting season is over for the farmers. You don't need the rain then. Um, they've already got the crops out of the ground. So you don't need it then. We need it now when they're trying to get their crops to grow, their, their corn and their soybeans or wheat or whatever they're trying to grow. Because I know we were farmers and, and my um, husband and ex-husband had put in an irrigation system. And he had to use that irrigation system every day to water the corn because it, we just didn't get the rain you know, when we needed it sometimes to, to uh, get it to grow. But then in the fall when we're ready to uh, plant, to uh, go, in, go out there and get the crops out of the ground, oh my goodness, it would pour down in buckets. And then we'd have to stop. And I got so angry because I said, I want to get this harvesting done because I'd be out there helping him with the harvesting. And I didn't want to be out there day after day after day out there doing it. I wanted to be able to, to relax, you know. We usually get done by the maybe, um, middle of November, sometimes early November we'd get done because we start in September with the soybeans and we're done by early November with everything. So it was always good to get it done, but boy, when the rains came along, I hated it. I just hated it really bad. Now I'm going to stir this a little bit more here again. I just hated it so bad because it's just, it's just no fun when it keeps on raining and raining and raining. I mean, sure, it brightens your grass up and everything, but my goodness, you only need it at certain times of the year. You don't need it all, all the time, you know. It's just, it's just awful that that it's just got to rain and rain and rain. See, what I'm going to do is i got to keep um, this is on sear so we can start start thickening up. So I'm just stir this, and, and when it thickens up, then I know it's done. It hasn't quite thickened up yet, but it'll be getting there. So, but I I don't know. The, the weather is what it is. I don't particularly like the fact that we have dry summers and rainy winters, but I can't do anything about it. If I could do something about it, I would. If I could do a rain dance, and cause rain to come down in the summer, I would. Now, I've heard that people can, can do a rain dance that starts raining in the summer. Well, I haven't thought about doing that. I thought, well, if God wants to rain in the summer, he'll give us the rain. He has given us the rain a few times, so if you really did need it, we need it again. We're a little dry again. Because the last time he gave us rain, I think it was last week, we only got about a quarter of an inch one night. Um, and we do get thunderstorms very rarely here. I know where Erlene's at, probably she gets thunderstorms. My daughter gets thunderstorms. It's very rare to have thunder here. Thunder or lightning. It'll just basically just rain real hard. Especially in the fall, we, I don't get any, we don't get any rain. Thunderstorms at all. It's all rain. No thunderstorms. And isn't that, isn't that odd? But it's just, that's just the area that we live in. Everybody's different, you know. But, like I said, it is what it is. Um, what's everybody going to have for supper? Have you got your, have you got your supper planned out? I, well, you know, I really don't like it too much. Thunder and lightning can be very scary at times, especially when it's a loud clap, because you know it's coming in. It scares my dogs. They'll start barking, because the thunder can be so loud at times, it'll just shake the house. That's how bad it gets. So I'm not looking forward to having a lot of thunder and lightning. If it rains with no thunder and lightning, that suits me fine. Don't give me the thunder and lightning. I don't want it. I just want the rain. But I don't want so much rain that we're sitting in puddles of water because my yard can get like soup and I don't want to be in puddles of water. Um, right now it's it's you know, a little dry and I keep it watered every few days. Um, water for about uh, in the morning about six o'clock in the morning I'll turn it on and about ten o'clock in the morning or so I turn it off. And then within four hours it, it, it ends up being pretty good. It's got enough moisture there that that ties it over for a few days. But I, this idea of not getting any rain at all is just driving me crazy. I don't understand why we don't get the rain. It's just, it is what it is, you know. We, I have to deal with it, and I'm sure you would have to too. If you, you got dry, you would have to deal with it too. I'm gonna step away for just a minute.
Now I'm back. See, this is starting to thicken up, I believe. Yeah, it's got seven minutes, a little bit more than seven minutes to go. So this needs to thicken up. And it's getting there. You can see it's getting there. Um, it's getting there. So it has to thicken up. And that's what I want it to do. Thicken up. And then I'll add the vanilla extract after I turn this after I turn the sear off. And this after 15 minutes. That's why I've got it on the timer. I've got it on the timer on the not microwave. So when it when it beeps, I know it's 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 done and I can turn this off then. Otherwise I have to leave it on sear until until that time. But anyway, what's everybody having for supper? Have you got your meal planned out for tonight? Of course the, <laughs> I've already had my lunch. I had a couple sandwiches and that. I'm going to have some ice cream a little bit later. I've got some ice cream in the freezer. I'll be getting it out and eating it later. You know, um, I like to eat ice cream. I, I've got oranges for snacks. I've got carrots. I've got celery for snacks. If I want to eat snacks, you know, I try not to snack too much. But boy, I tell you, it's very, it's very hard because we all like to eat, don't we? I know I do. And and sometimes I catch myself eating the wrong stuff, and I say, whoops, I got to put that back. You know, I. I <laughs> It's not, if, if it was in the refrigerator, I'd have to put a lock on my refrigerator to keep me out of it. But it's not. It's stuff I, I have sitting around. And I guess I got, if I didn't buy it, I wouldn't eat it. So I guess I have to, I'm blaming myself for that one. I, it, it looks too tempting, so I bring it home. I guess if I if I just um, eat it in moderation, it's not so bad. But it's, it's uh, trying to, you know, trying to keep the weight down and then, and then doing what I need to do. It's not an easy thing to do. And I'm sure you all, you've all been down that road where weight loss can be a challenge, a real big challenge. I mean, but if you've tried, if you've tried to lose weight and then you gain it back, you you wonder why it's happened, you know. And I know mine's going up and down like a yo-yo. I've gained a little bit back, but I know I'll lose it again. It's it's easy to do that. It's easy to gain, and it's e and it's a lot easier to gain than it is to lose it. Much easier. I wish I could say that. I wasn't gaining, but I am gaining a little bit here, and I'm gaining, gaining a little bit there, and I'm trying to trying to do everything I can to get it back down to where it's supposed to be. Welcome to everybody coming in, and thank you for coming in. I'm trying to trying to get my weight um, like it's supposed to be, but it's not an easy thing to do. You know, it's it's just very hard. It's really really hard um, to try to get your your weight to where it's supposed to be. I, I struggle. I've struggled my whole life with my weight, and I'm, it's, uh, that's unfortunate but true. I really struggle. I, I, I've been on what you call a yo-yo diet. I lose a little and I gain a little. I lose a little and I gain a little. And I feel, what have I accomplished? Not much of anything because I can't keep it at an even keel. It goes up and then it goes down. And then when it goes down, I try to keep it there, but then it wants to go back up. So then I go back. So then I try to get it back down to try to get it back to where it was before. It's so difficult. It's very, very difficult. But I'm getting there. I know I'm getting there. I feel a lot better. I look a lot better. My clothes are fitting a lot better. That's because I had to change my wardrobe. So I'm doing a lot better now. But it wasn't always easy. It's been a struggle my whole life. If, if, you're, if you've been on a yo-yo diet, you know what I mean. Because you gain weight and you lose some. You gain weight and you lose some. And I, I hate it. I hate it when I gain weight all the time. But that's the way it goes, you know. It's, it happens. Um, this thing's getting here, as you can see. Oh, this thing I could do that because it's, it's on sear anyway. But see there, look at that. See, it's getting there. It's going to look real good. See, that's going to that good, gonna look good. Peach jam is looking real good. Um, this sear is helping. We well, still got a little more four minutes to go. So um, I'm going to keep stirring this a little bit um, till it, it's going to thicken up. But anyway, I don't want to ramble on and on and probably make no sense sometimes. But anyway, I still love trying to find recipes every day. Going on Pinterest, and the reason I go on Pinterest is I seem to find more there than anywhere else. I know there's Yumly, and there's uh, allrecipes.com. There's probably some other ones I could, and well, 3ABN has recipes as well. I could probably do some of those, but I like the ones on Pinterest because I can set my parameters, filters as to what I want to um, search for, and when I go in there every day, all I do is bring up that search, and it's right there. And then I don't have to do very much, to, and then just start scrolling down on the page. And when I saw this today, this peach jam, I thought, oh, this is awesome. I love jam. And I haven't had jam in ages. And you know why? You go look at the jam in the store. What does that stuff got in it? A lot of chemicals. And it's probably got your high fructose corn syrup. That's a big no-no. If it's got high fructose corn syrup in it, 
you leave it go. You do not touch it because that stuff is not good for you. But yet they put, the manufacturers will put that stuff in the foods, expecting us to eat it, you know, and people don't pay attention to what they're putting in their mouth before they put it in there. They don't check their ingredient list. You have to. I did today. I was picking up stuff off the shelf and looking at the ingredient list, trying to see what it had in it because I don't want to put something in my body that I'm not sure what it is. And I know we were, my daughter and I were talking this morning about something, and I can't remember what it was. And she says, oh my goodness, it's got high fructose corn syrup in it. She says, why would that have high fructose corn syrup? It was something that wasn't even sweet, but they had high fructose. Oh, Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers have high fructose corn syrup in it. Why they have high fructose corn syrup in them, I have no idea. That's crazy. Why? I don't understand it. But, the, you know, a high fructose corn syrup is put in so many things nowadays. It's just absolutely terrible. you got to be so cautious. And look at your ingredient list. Don't, um, just don't take it for granted that it's got good ingredients in it. Unless you look at the, at the list. Because if you can't pronounce it, and it doesn't have good ingredients in it, you don't want to put it in your body. I know I don't. I don't want to put it in my body at all. I want to be sure that I'm, I'm doing what, what I'm supposed to. You know, staying healthy. And that's not always the easiest thing to do, but we have to keep doing it. We have to, we just have to be diligent. Look at your recipes. Look at the ingredient list. Look at your ingredients on your products to see if, if your ingredient that you're needing is good for you or not. And you'd be surprised. Um, you've got to be so careful. There are so many out there that, and they do that to put preservatives in a lot of this stuff. I understand that. That's what they're doing for, for preservatives. I'm going to shut this thing off. Because they, the preservatives is, uh, is uh, okay to a certain point, but my goodness, it really makes it rough. You know, I don't like the fact that they put a lot of preservatives in there. It's just not good. And they put the wrong preservatives. That's the problem. Wrong preservatives. When you put your high fructose corn syrup and stuff, that's not a preservative to me. But yet they put all that kinds of stuff in there. You know, you know, even organic stuff. you got to be careful on organic stuff, too. They'll put a lot of organic stuff in there, you know. If it, if it looks good, it's okay, but sometimes they'll put something else in there that may not be organic, or they'll say, like organic apple cider vinegar. Huh? Why is apple cider vinegar organic? I don't even like this stuff, let alone use it or put it in my food. It's an acquired taste, and I don't care for it. It's too strong, and I won't buy it. Um, it's fermented anyway, so when I see that, or, or your vanilla extract. Like, this is non-alcoholic, but you go to the store. You go to get your vanilla extract, or probably your almond or peppermint on them, they're going to have um, alcohol in them. And I'm thinking, why is there alcohol in here? I wonder why it always had a strong taste. Even the organic has has a strong, has, has a organic alcohol in it. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off, and then I'm going to add my, my, uh, oh, I got this out. I already got it out for my vanilla extract, and I'll stir it on. This is half a tablespoon of vanilla extract. on so I don't spill that. I'm going to stir this around. Oh, wow. Awesome. This is awesome. What do you guys think of that? Isn't that awesome? I can put it in a container. Let's see. I can find it. I got to find a container to put it in. But I can hold this up like this because this isn't hot. Isn't that awesome? And I can put it on there. Let me put some on this spoon and show you. Look at that. Doesn't that good? And it's my own peach jam. Now, like I said, they call for honey, but I put in agave nectar because I thought I would I would like that a little bit better. I'm going to take get a spoon or a fork, and I'm going to try some of this to see what it tastes like. Mm. Wow, very good peach jam. Mm -mm. Really good. And it's not real tart and it's not real sweet. It's kind of in between. Because you got the lemon juice in there. You know, you kind of kind of counteracts the other. So that's why they do that. So you don't have it real sweet. Um, hi crunchy lemon drop. Good to see you. Um, I'm gonna put this in a some kind of container. I can put it in a bowl for an hour. I've got to find a container to put this in because it's gotta go in the refrigerator. Let me find something here. Some over here. Let me see what I've got over here. Uh, I got one. I think it'll fit into. 
Let's see. It might fit into this one. This is a Pampered Chef. This is a Pampered Chef container. I think it should fit in here. If it doesn't, well, we'll find out. <laughs> we will soon find out. I'm willing to try things once. If it don't fit, it might come close. Oh my goodness, it is going to fit. Awesome! Wow! Awesome! Of course, this has to go in the refrigerator. It has to be stored in the refrigerator. So, um, I'm going to put some water in that so that sticks. Get some, I'll put some water in my, in my uh, the quick cooker pot so it doesn't uh, sit there and stick on the bottom. There. What do you think? Oh, you'd make mean, mean, mean mango peach salsa? Wow. I think I've heard of that. I think I've seen. It does, Erlene, doesn't it? That is going to go on my toast with peanut butter and stuff. Peach jam. You could, you could eat it just like that. You can put it on a piece of toast without, without any peanut butter. Just put peach jam on it. I have never made peach jam before. I thought, oh, this is awesome. And I'm loving the fact that I can make my own jam. And Erlene said she saw a recipe for strawberry jam. I have to get that recipe because I don't know what that one is. But when I saw this peach one, I thought, well, everybody loves peaches. And I'm just going to make this one. Um, it took, I bought extra peaches. They were pretty overly, some of them were getting a little too ripe. But I did peel them. It didn't say to peel them. It just said to uh, pit them and, and chop them up. I thought, well, I better peel them. It might be better to peel them. So I washed them real good first, and then I peeled them. And then I took the time to, to cut them up before I came in here. But it does look really good, doesn't it? And it's only just a few ingredients. It's just your lemon juice and your your peaches. I've got a, it's supposed to be a pound and a half of peaches. I think I might have two pounds of peaches in there. And it's got um, a quarter, I calls for a quarter cup of honey, but I put a quarter cup of agave nectar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and a half a tablespoon of vanilla extract is what this has in it. Not much at all. Very, just very few ingredients, but yet it tastes really, really good. And I know people are going to want to make this. This is going to go up on my vegan Facebook page, definitely. See if people want to make this. It's going to be awesome. I'll put it in the refrigerator. It'll probably even taste better once it's been in the refrigerator because you have to keep it cold, as, as all jams have to be cold. But, man, look at that. I mean, just just look at that. Doesn't that look good? And in the, in the quick cooker, no less. And it only took a minute to cook. Then I seared it. <coughs> after the pressure went down for 15 minutes to kind of thicken it up because you want to get it thick it looks awesome it really does because you have to get it thick and you can see it's it's on the thick side you can see it is it's thickened up it probably could have been a little thicker but it's thick you really want to get it thick it's really awesome mm. wow that is good stuff so um if you want to try to make this i try to make it and see what you think of it oh man mm. It's a lot better when you buy in the store. And like I said, it's not real sweet either. It's kind of in between. It's part tangy and part sweet because you don't want it real sweet because some of the stuff they have in the store is way too sweet. They have a lot of sugar in them. This has no sugar. It's just got your sweetener. So it doesn't have any any, any of that in there. But it's good. It tastes good. I love peanut butter on toast in the morning. You know something? I can just stick a this jam on top of the peanut butter and it'll be good. Really good because I eat toast every morning for breakfast. So this will get used up pretty fast. And it fits in this container. I think this is the five cup, I think it is. This is the five cup container for Pampered Chef. It fits in there real nicely. I was afraid it wouldn't fit, but it fits real nicely. It's simple to make. It's for the Instant Pot, but anything for the Instant Pot will work in the quick cooker. It's just that your terminology for each is different because you have saute for the um, Instant Pot and you have sear for the quick cooker you have manual for the instant pot and you have uh, custom for the quick cooker you just have to know the terminology what each means you know because uh, people have asked me well do do any of the instant pot recipes work in the quick cooker yes they do every recipe i've made in here for the quick for that i put the quick, in the quick cooker was actually made in an instant pot but i just changed it and put it in the quick cooker Follow the directions and just use the terminology that the quick cooker has and it come out perfect. Um, so that's all you have to do is just remember the terminology. Of course, if you don't have a quick cooker, you don't have an Instant Pot, I don't know how you're going to make this peach jam. You might be able to do it on the stove maybe. I don't know. I didn't see a stove pot stop recipe for it. But this is simple to make it in a pressure cooker. And it's real amazing that you can make stuff like this in a pressure cooker. It's so 
much easier and faster. And that's why they call it a quick cooker, because everything is done fast. You know, if a husband and wife work during the day, and she has to fi fix a meal at night, well, all she has to do is get the stuff out in the quick cooker, and she'll have a meal in a short period of time. You can have a meal in a half hour, sit down at a table and eat, sometimes less than a half hour. It just depends on what you're fixing and how long it takes to come to pressure, if you have to release it naturally or release it manually or whatever. Um, that all depends too. But this turned out really, really good. And like I said, I used agave instead of honey. I could have used the honey, but I wanted to use agave instead. So you could, when you make this, you feel free to use what you want. If you don't want to use the honey, use agave. If you don't want to use agave, then use the honey. Or you can use maple syrup, whatever you choose to use. Because it's your recipe. You fix it the way you want. But I did. I tweaked this the way I wanted it to. Wanted to tweak it and put the agave nectar in there instead of the um, uh, the honey. I could put the honey in there, pure honey, but I thought, well, I'll just try agave nectar. I think that would be fine because it's a sweetener too. You've got several sweeteners. You've got your agave nectar. You've got uh, maple syrup, and you've got stevia too, and um, and then you've got your honey. So some people call, like stevia. Well, that's pretty potent stuff if you ever if you have ever used stevia. You can't use much of it because it's quite potent. Very, very potent. So you got to be really, really careful with it and not use too much. So anyway, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to call it quits on this pretty quick because I, I want to clean out my kitchen a little bit, um, start looking for more recipes. But I just want to come in here and show you that you can make, you can make peach jam in the quick cooker and it will turn out absolutely beautiful. Um, it tastes good. And they'll probably thicken up in the refrigerator anyway. As it gets colder, it'll thicken up. So, with that being said, I hope that you all have a great evening. And have whatever days left, or whatever time is left in your day, you have a great evening. I thank you all for coming in, the live viewers as well as the replay viewers. And until we meet again, take care, God bless, love you all, and bye-bye.